her, if you think about the personality styles of these people, they're entirely different. They are not birthed <laughs> in the same physical being. Anybody ever known a developer? Coder. Yeah, what are they like? Quiet, uh, very analytical. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay, anyone else? What is it? A developer. You might see them on a Friday night, sitting, drinking a Red Bull or a Heineken, listening to some techno music, and their idea of hanging out with friends is hanging out with toxic, toxic M64 on IRC, an internet relay channel, or a game. Yes? And that's, that's their night. How about a designer? Graphics designer. Yes. What are they like? Uh, like me. Okay. <laughs> what do you like? <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, a lot of people are outgoing, um, they're uh, very creative, um, and then some of them have better fly. So Perfect. Kind of very creative. How about an engineer? No one ever known an engineer? What are they like? You know, you're done. Somebody, you're, I'm going to pick you. <laughs> okay. What are they like? Engi engineer. Someone. This table, it's your turn. We're going to rotate. What is it? They overthink. they overthink things perfectly. What else? Articulate. What else? It's your table's turn. Mastermind. Mas okay, I'll take that. Yours. Or it's good on paper. <laughs> <laughs> the numbers say it's going to work. Right? They take too long to make decisions. They overanalyze things. They're always doing what? Researching. <laughs> okay? They're researching. They're analyzers. That's what an SEO person is. They're engineers. A web designer. Creative. A developer. Very analytical, very different. I've heard other words, I won't use them. Okay, how about a social media marketer? Anyone ever known one? Your table. None. That's a problem. <laughs> okay. You guys, these are social butterflies. You might wonder what they're doing and if it's ever going to impact your business. Fair? <laughs> Does it actually impact your bottom line? How about a content writer? Are they different? Content writer, a writer, somebody that sits back in solitude and they write. That's what they do. In order for you to do this right, Bob can't do it. You cannot hire a Bob. So the challenge is, if you hire a receptionist or you have your wife or you have somebody come in and you say, you know what, I'm going to hire a marketing person. I'm going to bring in Jane or Bob. They're going to make this happen. That's not going to work. The reason is, is you guys need like 10%, 5%, 2%, or 15% of each one of these resources, expertise, depending on the time of the year, depending on where you are in your business, depending on how long you've been in your business, depending on what assets you have, what assets you don't have, what you're trying to grow, what areas you're trying to target. Every one of these resources, you just need a small percentage. Does that make sense? Awesome. All right. And we heard this saying, what is it? Your table. Evolve or? As a group. Evolve or? Fantastic. If you're not growing, you're? Dying. You guys, we are in a time where literally the world around us is changing faster than you are. Would you agree with that? It's changing. And we, can't, we have to catch up. We have to catch up really, really quick. This process of evolution of technology is literally changing the way people think, the way they research, the way they buy, the way they make their buying decisions. Do you know the majority of people have already decided if they're going to work with you before they what? Before they talk to you. Fair? This industry, I love the HVAC industry because we have nowhere to go but up. <laughs> we are right here. We're working on this. How long have smartphones been out? I'll put it up. <laughs> How long? Have they been around for a while? <clears throat> Google sent out notices year over year over year over year saying your website has to be mobile responsive. Originally it went out and it said you need a mobile version of your website. Then it says you need an HV and HTML5 version of your website. Then Google came out last year, uh, April of 2015, and said, 
Your website better be responsive. Responsive coding. And if it's not, you will be penalized. We're done playing this game. Everyone has a cell phone. How many of you have a cell phone with you? <laughs> There's probably more people without underwear than cell phones. Okay. You guys, take them out. Leave your cell phone out. If you want to take pictures, you want to snap pictures of the slide. I like this slide better. I'm just kidding. If you want to take pictures, take them out. I don't mind at all. You guys, right now, this is what we're thinking about. We're thinking about how do I get your business to show up when somebody has a conversation with their wrist? Hey, Siri, show me a great HVAC provider in blank. Siri, I need an AC repair guy in blank. Location. This is a different query than somebody pulling up a computer and typing in a search, AC Repair Orlando, AC Service Orlando, AC Maintenance Orlando, AC Installation Orlando, AC Replacement Orlando. It's a different search because it's a human having a conversation with their wrist or Siri. All right. This is all that matters. I would literally rather listen to a group of soccer moms Tell me how they buy than a marketing agency any day. Why? Because the yes, they're the ones buying. What else? Because that's, that's what matters. There's only really two things that matter. Well, three. One, what does the consumer think? What is their mindset? What are their different personality styles? There's four primary personality styles. How do they go about the process? What's important to them? How do they feel during the process? Because I promised you, they absolutely make their decisions based on how much you care before they care about how much you know. So which changes things. Second one is, what are Google's ultimate requirements? Third, where do you want to take your business? How many of you are interested in growing? Yes? Okay, raise your hands. I got to see you. All right. How many of you would rather be more operationally efficient and more profitable? All right, how many of you would uh, like to make so much money you can hand your business over to your kids or someone that works for you and sail off into the sunset? <coughs> Woo, <laughs> that's me. Okay, so in order to accomplish this, we gotta know what the end in mind is. I want you to think, how many of you are dads? Moms, grandparents, don't be shy, uncles? I want you to think, get out of the, the business owner mindset right now. Get out of sales. I want you to think like dad, grandpa, uncle, mom, sister. You guys are interested in installing a new pool in your backyard. What do you do? Table. What do you do? Research. Where? Google. You go to Google. What else do you do? Call, Call your friend. Get a referral. And your uncle gives you, OK, your uncle does pools. Totally not fair. <laughs> OK. <laughs> this is the uncle plug. All right. <laughs> so. These are the two ways people buy. They go to Google or they ask a friend. So let's go into the my business is by referral. Awesome. If you got a referral to ABC Pool Company, what are you going to do next? Call. You're going to call them? Okay. What else? Someone else? I'm going to research them. Well, how are you going to research them? What are you going to look for? You're going to go to Google and you're going to type in what? Name of, the Name of the business. Name of the business. Would you might put the word reviews on it? ABC pool reviews. Literally two years ago when I used to ask this question, I would ask how you bought business and it was a good percent of the room that would say, I would ask a friend and I would call the friend. It was the majority. <coughs> now I can have an audience, which I love because you guys are my soccer moms. Okay, I can have an audience of a thousand people and ask them, how do you buy? A, they go to Google and do their research. B, they get a referral. C, they check them out online before they call them. They, they type in company name plus the word reviews. If it's good, great, they may call. If it's negative, they're not calling at all. If they can't figure out who the heck you are, they're also not calling. As a business owner, do you have visibility of that missing opportunity? The one who didn't call. Do you have visibility? No, you have none. I literally had a guy that stood in front and he was like, Psh, I'm a referral business. Typed in his company, looked up reviews. I was like, hmm, I can't tell what his company was. It was like A1 Heating, <laughs> my favorite business name. I want to be at the top of the list, so I do A1, right? Yellow Pages Days. Okay, <laughs> so 
now literally 95 to 100 percent of every audience across the nation that I talk to is saying, A, I look them up online, B, I get a referral, C, I don't call unless I do my research first and if I don't like what I see or I can't figure it out or it's too complicated, I'm out. I'm out. You guys, go home. Dad, go back to mom and dad. You go home, you go check the mail, where do you go first? You tell me. You go home, you go to your mailbox, pull in your driveway, get out the key, go to your mailbox. Where do you, where do you go next? Trash can. Trash can, anyone else? Go. See, I'm from Seattle, we recycle. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, anyone else? The only difference about the answer to that question, depending on location is, if, if we're sitting in the Chicago area or mid-states and I ask that question, they say that they go to their bin they have next to their fireplace because that's what they start their fires with. In Washington, they go to the recycling bin, west coast, east coast goes to the trash. <laughs> Same with south. <laughs> okay, it is, that's it, that's the only difference. That's the only difference. How many of you listen to radio in your car? Actually, listen to a radio station. Raise your hand. How many of you listen to Siri? XM. I may listen to your Bluetooth on your music on your phone. Okay. <laughs> Be careful. How many of you still watch commercials on television? Okay. Super Bowl. I'm in. Absolutely. It's the only time I actually watch a commercial. <laughs> okay. This is the challenge. When you guys are putting together your marketing plan, the problem is, is that you're thinking like a business owner, not like dad and not like mom, and that's what matters. That's what matters. So when you get your mail, you're glancing at it to see what the next postcard looks like from your competitor. Why? Do you do that? Have you done it? Every one of us has. We have to like eliminate, implode a piece of our brain that is absolutely making us have bad decisions when it comes to our business. We get to get really, really grassroots. You have to think of this as mom, dad. And then you have to be very, very careful that your personal preference doesn't overweigh or out outweigh what you think everybody else might do. Maybe you hate Facebook. Raise your hand. Anyone dislike it? Awesome. Okay. Do you tend to sway towards, why would I be on Facebook? Because of your personal preference. Yeah. I know you do. It's OK. But you have to stop. <laughs> you have to stop. Because the rest of the world, how many of you have a wife that's on Facebook 50% of her day? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Your kids aren't on Facebook. They think Facebook's for dead people. So it's not this is for kids, <laughs> OK? <laughs> right? The kids are different. You have to think about this. An entire, how many of you have teenagers? So you'll be able to relate to this. An entire population on the planet can change the way they communicate in 30 days. Literally. Have you seen that? Have you seen them flip gears and move to Snapchat? And then they're done. Twitter's over. Facebook's over. Now every region in the company is on a different schedule, I'm noticing. Thankfully, we have a 17-year-old I can figure this stuff out with different timing, an entire population changing the way they communicate. Do they use email? No, oh, they think it's... <laughs> Literally. How many of you plan on being in business a thousand days from now? That's a different group of people. That's a different group of people. So, all right. This is really hard to see, but I'm just gonna explain it. The right-hand side, in an internet environment, online, digitally, there are two real ways to make money. Two. One, it's on-page SEO and off-page SEO. You've heard of search engine optimization. Probably disappointed with most of your results from Bob. Okay. However, <laughs> search engine optimization is the process of getting ranked and placed on page one of Google for the search phrases in the locations that your consumers are already searching. Is it important? If for one second you don't think it's important, or it's too complicated, or no one can get it done, somebody can get it done because there's 10 pages sitting in your area you want to be found for right now. Here are your main phrases. AC repair, AC installation, AC maintenance, AC service. 
AC replacement, AC change out, AC tune up. Fair? <coughs> Furnace, heater, same thing. Difference is, some people use the word AC, some people use the word air conditioner, some people use the word air conditioning. So that takes what should be seven phrases and it's times three. What they don't look for is cooling repair, which I see way too many HVAC sites say cooling repair, <laughs> which is an action, right? Air conditioning falls into that too. The second way you can get found is pay-per-click. Pay-per-click is the ads at the very top of the site, ads on the right-hand side of the site. If you had a bad experience in the past, probably because A, you tried to do it yourself, B, you hired Bob, C, you didn't have a landing page, or D, it was when Google used to allow somebody to click on the ad 15 times, four bucks, four bucks, four bucks, four bucks, four bucks, four bucks, that doesn't exist anymore. Times have changed, okay? <laughs> Third one, not on here, on the right-hand side. Anybody ever done a search and you'll see a bunch of ads at the very top, then you're gonna see a map, then you're gonna see three companies with their reviews posted. Yes? That is Google Business Listing, which is tied to your Google Plus account, which is tied to the Google Maps location account. The more positive reviews you have in your area, the higher up on that search you're gonna show up, as long as everything else is perfect. You literally have the ability to dominate for the city that you have a physical address in as long as your website, your content, your on-page SEO, your off-page SEO, your pay-per-click, and your reviews are all focused on one particular area and your social media is used to support it. Google cares about three things. Are you current? That's the frequency of new content getting posted on your website. It's called a blog. How many of you have a blog and you add content regularly? I'm gonna go, I want all, all five of your cards. Okay, secondly, is going to be, are you relative? That is the labeling of the content. How many of you have a page on your website called Our Services? Okay, here's the challenge. Home, about. Our services, FAQ, contact us, our team, our mission, our location, our service areas. All are junk pages in Google's mind. You guys have a filing cabinet at your office, yes? All right, if you think of a filing system, that's all Google is. You have a filing cabinet, that cabinet has a name. This is for your contracts, this is for your proposals, this is for your maintenance agreements, right? And each drawer has a label on the outside. When you open up a drawer, it has a label on the green folder, and inside the green folder you have a what? A manila folder, and that has a label on it. If I gave you a piece of paper and I said, go file that so he can find it later when he's looking for AC services or AC repair in blank, and you put it inside a cabinet called our services, that had a label of a file called our services and the green manila, our services, would someone be able to find it? There's thousands. That's all Google is. Google is a giant filing drawer. So if you give it a general label, you're gonna go into a general bucket. When you have time, go Google the word our services. That is a junk drawer with a billion other websites that all did the same thing. Absolutely zero value, okay? Does that make sense? Here's the thing, when you go to Google, so I'm gonna get stuck on this. Everything else, this is my ADD, I get excited about this stuff. All right, everything else on the left side supports this. The third thing Google cares about, so are you relevant, are you current? The third one is, are you trusted? The great part about digital marketing, once you get this down, it's identical as offline marketing. If you're talking to a consumer, do they want to know that you're current? Do they want to know that you're relative? And are they going to ask you for some reviews and testimonials? What do other people think? Do they trust you? It's identical. It's no difference. The only difference is, is Google can't see or hear you say we're great. What it can read, your social influence, is your social media site active? Do other people like you? Do other people comment? Do other people share? Do other people love your service so much that it gives you a, they give you a review? Google can see that. Anybody have Angie's List? And you get reviews on there? 
What does someone have to do to be able to see those reviews? You have to pay service. have to pay. No. <laughs> no. Under no circumstances. It's fine to have that, but that's not my goal. My goal is I want public reviews on my Google business listing so they are helping push my SEO rankings up, so they're helping make my pay-per-click ads show up more often. I want everything leveraged. If I get a positive review, where does it go? So, everything else on the left-hand side. These are email marketing newsletters. This is your text message campaign, your social media campaign, your local listings campaign. All of those things are required and necessary in order to make these things on the right that actually make you money work and faster. Does that make sense? Yeah? You guys have questions so far? How many of you already knew this? A little bit? You knew it and ignored it? <laughs> okay. Okay, so first thing here, we're going to focus on attracting leads. Your website, it has to be mobile responsive. Responsive. Have you ever went to a website and as soon as you get there, it's so tiny, you're like this on your phone, trying to stretch it out and make it bigger? We cannot do that. Have you ever went to a website and when you're on there, you see the phone number and you tap it? Nothing happens. <laughs> you tap that phone number like 80 times and you're like, phone, out the window. Next. <laughs> okay? That cannot happen. We have to make it easy for consumers. We have to make it easy for mom and dad to be able to, because you, you guys, you are on a list of like 9,000 other priorities they have. They're not excited about having to call you. Their list literally is, I gotta pick up the kids from school, I gotta get my grocery list, I gotta make sure, oh my God, my floors, I gotta get the carpets clean, I've got my grandparents coming this weekend, we've got a party happening on Saturday, oh my boss needs that report, I gotta remember to submit a vacation request. For my. If you think about a human, it's, it's you, you live in that space. Fixing or servicing or replacing my AC unit is not fun, <laughs> it's not exciting, and it's one of 10,000 things on somebody's daily checklist. So you better make it easy have to make it convenient. Fair? All right, websites. The old day of wait, making a website, you built a website, you let it sit. Finally, you're like, this, thing, this, this thing's like a big bump on a log. This website's slightly smarter than a box of rocks. <laughs> it's not really doing well for me. Three years later, five years later, you decide, you know what, I might need a new website. A website in today's environment has a life cycle of about 18 to 24 months. Two years from now, that's going to be less. Two years from then, that's going to be less. Where you should be thinking right now is, how do I have a website and a team of people that are evaluating everything and making sure that we're making constant changes at least every six months, if not every three? We're constantly improving, improving, improving. You guys, this stuff is like literally building a city on quicksand. It's hard. And having five different companies doing everything. You got your YP person over here doing, you don't know what, because you never get a report. You got your Dex Media people over here doing, I have no idea. You got your Yodel people over here that made you some website that doesn't even look like your brand and has a phone number that you don't even own indexed on Google. Because we went to a conference and we asked our buddies, hey, what's working? This requires logic, a brain a business analyst that understands how to run a business because there's so many different impacts operationally, technically, and related to sales and marketing. These teams have to be guided. When you take that, that list of people that I had up there earlier, I promise you it's literally like taking your attorney, your financial planner, and your CPA and putting them in a room and let them duke it out. Do they believe they're right? Have you been there? They do and they fight about it, right? Well, that's what these marketing people do. That's what my team does. <laughs> they require like a, a referee <laughs> who says, I know what consumers want, I know what our client wants, and I know who has the call on this shot. They need to fight it out because that's where ideas come from. But when you separate them and you put them on different companies and they're all over, you don't have that referee and I promise you, you can't play that role. You know what I mean? Okay. All right. So. A website in today's environment in the HVAC industry, they need to be creative. They need to be current. So this is a guy out of um, Idlewood, California. He's up in the mountains. It's snowy most of the time. They sell a lot of furnaces and um, fireplaces and wood stoves and a whole bunch of different things. 
Does it look like the tradi traditional red, white, and blue HVAC site? When people go there, it feels like home. It feels like home. Do they feel good when they're there? Here. Having a giant piece of equipment sitting up there, does that make people feel good? You know what consumers have issues with? Their kid has allergies. Their toes are cold in the living room. They're so tired of their bedroom being the hottest room in the house. Their husband has sleep apnea and has a hard time breathing. They've got air issues, right? Their electricity bills are too hot. They've got mold growing in the windows. They have condensation, or mold growing. They have condensation growing in the windows, or not growing, you know what I mean? The fact that I know anything about HVAC is really surprising. My dad's constantly like, wow, how did that happen? Okay, <laughs> so you'll notice up here, it's gotta be personal. It's gotta be personal, not just technical. Now, let's go to the next one. This company is in Arizona. What you're gonna see, top right corner says schedule service, get an estimate. Call to actions are critical. Your, your call to actions are pretty much the same. They should be. Problem is, is I go to your websites and all I see is contact us. It's not personal. There's no connection. It doesn't spark my brain to go, that's what I need. I need to contact us. So you need to be very, very careful. Your customers, your current customers need a home. So on the right hand side, you'll see my account. That little, little people over there. That was somebody tapping the phone number and it clicking to call automatically. A Google protocol. It has to be on every phone number on every website. This right here. I think this is schedule service. Did I just? So this is the my account area. This is schedule service. This gives somebody that's totally busy that comes to your website. They were doing a quick Google search while they were on their lunch break. They're like, you know what? I can't deal with this. Oh, I can ask for an appointment in the future. Okay, I can knock that out real quick. I can't call them right now, but I can do that. So they can go in here, they can choose a time or up to three times. This is tied to your schedule. Totally different from dispatching. Two pieces of the business. Operational piece of the business, dispatching somebody to go do the work. Sales side of the business. Scheduling a, an appointment to talk about their needs. Very, very different. Both critical. On the bottom, they have to know who you are, what you do, where you do it, how to reach you, do other people like you, and can they tell you what they think of you? Which is why you'll see a link at the top of all our sites that say, review us on Google, or view our reviews, or see our reviews, or see what our customers are saying. Troubleshooting system I'm gonna come back to. Who we serve, very important. If you serve commercial versus residential versus new construction versus rural, you gotta let them know, and you gotta let them know right out of the gate. Your call to actions, schedule service, Schedule an appointment today. Sign up for our maintenance plan. How many of you have a maintenance plan? How many of you have it on auto reoccurring billing so you don't have to invoice them every single year? That needs to happen. That's, re that's residual income for you guys. So when you have 70 degree weather or 68 to 72 degree weather for a good X number of months, you still have money coming in. Very important. Every other service, go back to mom and dad. How many of you have pest control that comes out and does your house? Anyone? Okay, how many of you have water delivered? No water service? How many of you have uh, landscaping people come regularly? Okay, how many of you have a cell phone bill? Internet bill? <laughs> people are totally cool. If you make their life easier to give you their credit card, take the money out, and please take this stuff off my list. <laughs> I don't want this on my list. Residual income, very important for you. Okay, also, I said, I said schedule, apply for financing. View pr promotions. These are the basics that you need to have in a site. All right. Navigation. You guys really need two rows of navigation. The problem is you guys have too many services to put on one row. So because you have so many, what it does is it causes you to make that bucket that says our services and make your drop down there. Need to not do that. Top row of navigation, those are the general things. Home, about us, our team, our mission. Possibly blog, contact us. Basic things. Top level navigation, very, very top. Secondary navigation, what you do. AC, heating, indoor air quality, ductless, and so forth. All of the primary services. Hover over a service, it drops down what people are looking for. Those are the piece of paper that you need to put in Google's file drawer, properly labeled, with the right service, which doesn't tie you to location. That's what your blog's for. 
Otherwise, you'd have 500 drop downs if you did AC service in blank and blank and blank and blank and blank and blank and blank. That content goes on your blog. Make sense? All right. So, you'll see. No matter where you go on the site, you got to make sure there's a call to action on the site. You'll notice that's always there. They can close it down and make it go away. But no matter where they travel on the site, you don't want people to have to hunt for how to reach you, how to schedule an appointment, how to talk to you. You need to make sure that's there. That can easily be done via a widget. All right. Uh, let's see here. Next. Functionality, informational, educational. Problem with building a gorgeous website is people don't stay. <laughs> they come there, they literally scroll down really, really fast and they're like, wow, best HVAC site I've seen. We got to get them on the site and we got to keep them there. So, on these, there are certain resources pages that we put on every site. An HVAC terminology page where they can go and figure out what the heck BTU is or SARE and so forth. They don't know what it is. Also, an HVAC um, FAQ area where they can go in and they can ask questions. When should I replace my unit? How long does the unit last? And so forth. All that content we already have written. You don't even have to think about it. And I will tell you, the last thing I would ever wait on is an HVAC company to provide me content. <laughs> All I need to know is what you sell, where you sell it. We will write the content. Because <laughs> otherwise your website's going to take 24 months in order to get built. All right. Other service things. So to key people. So this is the FAQ area and the terminology area that's going through on the site. You'll notice on the footer of every site, we have the basic core things you need on every footer. You need to have your address, your logo, your phone number. You need to have possibly a licensing number. You need to have what credit cards you take, what your hours are. You need to have a map to our location on there. You need to make sure you have a branded picture of your truck because you're trying to try, tie some familiarity between what your trucks look like onto your website. So you need to have that there. OK. So we also have promotions discounts. Your guys' promotions, these are the things that should be on there. And this is part of your sales strategy. Discounts, promotions, seasonal discounts, manufacturer rebates, incentives, energy efficiency incentives, tax credit incentives. Right now it's what time? Tax time? That's what we should be talking about. Your social media sites should be talking about tax credits for high efficiency systems. Your local listings account should be talking about tax credits for high efficiency systems. What's a way to save? How can they get more money back on their taxes? You need to think about what's important to them at the right time. Okay. All right, so I hope I have troubleshooting on here on a different slide. We talked about the scheduling system. So that's the, the four icons at the top. The scheduling system is designed both to improve conversions, sales, as well as operations. So if somebody goes there and they say, I want to talk to you about blank, you're going to get a notification like this. It's going to give you the ability to accept the appointment, reschedule the appointment. It comes into your cell phone. You can answer it from your app. If somebody needs to reschedule, the consumer's going to get a notification as well, but all of your data lives in a central CRM system. How many of you only have customer data and only in your financial system it's sitting inside QuickBooks? I'll just leave that alone, <laughs> okay? You've got to be able to track every lead, every opportunity, know why they called, when they called, what were their main issues, what did they want, did they want a new system, was it not a good time? So if they call back, it doesn't sound like they're new. You need to be able to look up every lead and opportunity, whether they move forward or not. Maybe it was money. Maybe they couldn't afford it at that time, right? You also need to be able to ask questions that are going to help you do a better job at selling. If somebody bought an, if the last time somebody bought an air conditioning system or an HVAC system was 10 or 12 years ago, what's your biggest obstacle you need to be thinking about? How much did they spend and how much do they think it's going to cost now? You need to know that. Going in, I want to know, when was the last time you purchased an air conditioning system? They're like 12 years. You're like, oh God, right. They were like, two grand then. Can you imagine that? Jeez, things have changed. Get into it quick, because that issue's there in their mind, right? If they have financial issues or challenges, if they're price sensitive, you need to be talking about what are the promotions, what are the benefits. You need to know what are they conscious of. You have to focus more on resolving their issue. You've got to focus more on fixing the problem, making them more comfortable, reducing their bills. So having a SARE calculator on, this, on the site that calculates their cost savings over the next five years so you can talk more about what the savings are instead of what the cost is, that's going to help you as well. But the data's got to be centralized. You guys should have the ability to literally pull up a list 
of every single lead and opportunity that came into the business, know where it came from, also because that's how you measure your marketing activities and you know where to spend more money. The greatest part about marketing is once you get it right, you don't ask questions about what my budget should be. You don't care. You know if I increase my key phrases by 20, it's going to net me the ability to bring on two additional trucks and four additional installers and techs. And you're going to know the time frame. Would that be helpful? Okay. I know marketing feels like a giant black hole at the moment. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so far we've talked about attracting leads, capturing leads, nurturing prospects a little bit, converting sales we've talked about, delivering amazing results. You got to connect with the consumer based on their, their needs. You have to ask for reviews in the right place. You have to take those reviews and you got to re-leverage them everywhere else. It's no good to have a positive review sitting in your email account, in your a mail that they, they hand wrote you a letter, or sitting in Angie's list, or Home Advisor. You have to take that and you've got to repurpose it over and over and over again. All right. Uh, time online and bookmarking. So. One of the challenges, and this addresses it, this, there's this troubleshooting system that's in here. I said a minute ago, when you have an amazing site, problem is, is people are on and off it quickly and that hurts your SEO. So on one hand, it's good. We did one thing right. On the other hand, it's really difficult because it makes it difficult to get you ranked if they're only on your site for 30 seconds. So we have to be really creative about how to keep people on there. Is HVAC so interesting? Somebody's going to come read your blog on Saturday. Is it exciting? There yeah. is. <laughs> like, on who the is. <laughs> <laughs> and how much you want to pay, <laughs> right? They're expensive. Okay, so this is one way to do that. You guys have. There's three things this accomplishes. Essentially, somebody came to the site and it says, "Are you having a problem? Let's troubleshoot it. Is it with your air conditioning or your heating? Awesome. What's wrong? It's making too much. It won't come on. It won't turn on. Whatever the issue is, it walks through a series of things they can do quickly. So, is your thermostat on? Do you have it set to 72 degrees or 70 degrees? Um, check your batteries in your thermostat. Is the flip switched on your furnace? All these things, without sending them into the attic, they can fix themselves. So, one, you get about two minutes of somebody coming onto the site and sticking because they're using the system. Two, you give people something to bookmark. Problem is, is when people Google, they never remember what they Googled last, so they can never get back to the site they found. And they're like, ah, right? So you got to give them the ability to bookmark the site because there was something valuable on there. Most of the time, they're not going to waste their bookmarking space unless you have a site that actually has some value to it. So bookmark the site. Next thing it's going to do, it's going to prevent a negative review. If you go out and you, on a service call and you change a battery and a thermostat and you send them an invoice for a service call, how do they feel? Uh, Pissed. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> That's as bold as we can get. The problem with that is, is if you're spending this money on all these positive marketing things, you're trying to be progressive and progressive and so forth, and then you have somebody that's pissed and you could have resolved it by not taking the call because you allow them to fix that thing themselves, at least check it. You can avoid literally damaging your own marketing budget because it didn't cost you just that, that deal they don't want to pay. It can cost you a lot more. Make sense? Okay. All right. So, next. Engage in help mode. I showed you the troubleshooting system that is, um, let me see how this works. That is somebody going through and they're clicking and they're, they're going through that, right? For this system, this is a little bit different. Again, we're trying to get to the point where we can keep somebody on the site for a minute to three minutes. Three minutes the mark. That's where we want people to be, where Google says, okay, you're not a scam site. So here's another option to that. No audio. Why not? Is your air conditioning not working? Let's see if we can help you solve the problem by going over a few of the items that could be causing the issue. First item is the thermostat. Is the screen blank? If it is, try changing the batteries. Next, regardless of the type of thermostat, check to make sure it is set to the cool mode and that the temperature is set at a lower level than your current house temperature. Second item to check. Great part about video is if it's quality video, it's actually useful. You just bought a minute and a half from them watching the video. And hopefully they can solve a problem on their own. And if they won't, then at the end of the video, say, if this doesn't fix it, you're going to need expert care. Schedule, a, schedule an appointment with us below. 
All right? So, I talked to you a little bit about the interview process. Right now, you guys, paper is not your friend. If you're taking things down and you're interviewing people and it's on paper, that means that you can't sift, you can't sort, you can't find, you can't leverage, you can't use it, and you're missing a huge amount of opportunity. Being able to take that same information and drop it into a form where if somebody's sitting at the table doing an interview, you can easily ask the client, how long are you gonna be in your house? When did you buy it? When was the last time you purchased a, a system? What are your main issues? Do you have problems with eating? What's most important to you? If this information was in a database that you could sift, sort, track, report, find, and market to, would that be helpful? It's not difficult. You guys, these things are not difficult. Everything I'm telling you, I promise, this is not, I'm not giving you a, a lecture on what you guys need to go do. We do this all day long with our eyes closed while you go do your business. You just need competent people that can take care of it for you. All right, same thing. This information is so important. If your month is slow, go back to some of those people that couldn't afford it right then and talk to them about a great incentive, a great uh, rebate program that you have going on, an awesome financing opportunity. Maybe the, the lender is doing 0% financing for the next 18 months and you have a rebate program going on. This will give you the information to know why didn't they close then and how can you go back to home with something that's a better value proposition. Cool? All right. Next. Search results. This is the ambiguous black hole when people say we're doing SEO and you have no clue what they're doing. <laughs> I've heard every story <laughs> under the sun. And you guys, I, I don't know what it is, but hang on. <laughs> on a side note, you guys like have the biggest red target on your back for companies that are absolutely out of their mind and should not be doing what they do, targeting you and trying to sell you stuff. It makes me crazy. It's, let's go after contractors. Okay, so <laughs> SEO. Um, when you purchase an SEO program, you guys are actually identifying very, very specific phrases and locations that you wanna target. So how you should be investing in this is, I want 10 geo phrases. Geo means by location, AC repair, Orlando. And those are my phrases. That's what I'm paying for. Because you gotta be able to measure this, not I'm gonna invest in SEO and you have no clue what SEO is. And they're like, are you on page one of Google? And you say yes, and I ask you for what? And you're like, I don't really know that. My company name? Okay, so at the very top, I wonder if this has a little thing. Is that gonna, maybe, maybe? Okay, at the very top, that would show the number of key phrases. Here it would show you, I've got 20 phrases on page one of Google, Google sitting in position one through, one through three. I've got seven, uh, six phrases sitting in page one of Google, position four through 10. I've got five phrases on page two. I have one phrase that's not in the top five pages yet. That's measurable. What you should see as far as your rankings is you should see that over time, your visibility or your rankings continue to go up. When you go to Google, have you ever looked in the top left-hand corner where it says 10 of 357,000 or 10 of 20 million? Have you ever seen that in the very top left-hand corner of Google? That's your competitive pages. That's, the, that's how many pieces of paper are in the file drawer. Yay. So what number do you need to be out of that number in the top left-hand corner in order to make your phone ring? One. One through three. One through five, there's still business in it. One through three. Page one, one through three. That's your mark. Sometimes you're gonna have the Yelps and so forth that take up the first three spots. You need to at least be directly under them because there's a lot of consumers that don't like those sites. So being right under that, that's where position four and five come in, still valuable. Your company should be showing you where do you rank. So this is, this is the phrase, I think it's, AC Repair Sebastian or something, and that's the rank, number one. This is how you can plan your money and how you make a return. If there are, when you go, do a search, top left-hand corner, if it says 10 of 300,000, that's your mark. You need to be in the top five out of 300,000. For us, our stats are we can get you there in 90 days. Page one, 90 days. If it says 300,000 to, to 500,000, usually it can take between three months 
and six months. If it says 500,000 to a million pages, that can take 12 months or longer. Here's the thing, if you're trying to be number one out of 20 million, you're probably going after AC Repair Los Angeles, AC Repair New York, right? That number in the left-hand corner also is related to population, what you'll notice. The smaller the population, the smaller the number, the smaller the populations, the less households, the less systems, the less possible business. So you need a higher volume of lower competition phrases that can make you money quickly while you work on a bigger population territory that's going to take you longer to see a return on your investment. Does that make sense? It's actually just math. The problem is everybody thinks that it's too complicated to explain it, so I'm just not going to tell you, take your money and we'll call it good. No. <laughs> All right. In order to get you ranked, remember, new content posting regularly. You got to have one page per every service term, one page per service area that you want to go after. So you're always going to have to be adding new content and growing. Every quarter you need to be doing something more. Also, you've got to make sure your listings are 100% accurate because this is, do, do other people trust you? Anybody ever been called by one of these guys trying to sell you? Every day. I know. <laughs> okay, yes. And the fact that Google, they say Google calls you, Google will never call you. Ever. Every company that ever says, hi, I'm with Google and we want to get you to page one ranking. In fact, we've got two sp positions we've saved in your territory and we've only got two left. If you make a decision right now, I can make sure and hold that spot for you. Total, okay, thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, well, they'll send you a pin, okay? Hang up, total trash. Oh, <laughs> it's frustrating, okay. Every one of these, it's called a, a local business listing. Do you need to be on them? Absolutely. Does your information have to be meticulously perfect? The exact same company name, exact same address, exact same phone number, exact same description? Absolutely. You can play around with promotions and data and uh, all the text areas and services. You can do all of that. However, you have two reasons to do this. One is proactive offensive because you want to increase your Google rankings because you want more reviews. Here's the kicker, everyone texting for one second. Here's the kicker. If you don't have this, let's say you have a territory I want. I can go set up every one of your business listings with your company name, your address, your website, and my phone number. And, verify. and I, I can verify it and I can get every phone call you ever thought you would get. And I've seen it over and over, over and over. So on our website, on CI Web Group, there's a link at the bottom that says get your local listings report. You can absolutely do that or you can set up a strategy call and I'll go through it and I'll pull the report for you and show you what it looks like for your company, okay? For us, we don't make money at this, but you need it, 100 bucks a month, we set up every one of those for you, optimize it for you, and monitor your reviews on every single local listing site. There's, there's 60 of them, usually we can get 50 to 60 listings. And you have one company, one agency, and everybody that ever calls you, let them go. Because all they're gonna do is put your address in there, and that's it. They're not going to market it. They're not going to do anything with it. Most importantly with these, somebody needs to be monitoring reviews. If you get a positive review on one of these, they need to be taking that review, sending it to the social media team. Social media team needs to make a gorgeous graphic. They need to take that graphic, publish it out to all your social media sites, put it on an auto script that says, publish this awesome testimonial every 75 days for the next 16 years. Hands free. Is that valuable? Okay. You got to have a nerd. On a <laughs> Nerds are like, they're golden, right? Because everything is time consuming. I'm like, give me a nerd. We gotta get this stuff automated. This is crazy, I'm not doing this every day, okay? So this is what it looks like. In addition to that, monitoring and making sure no one stole your listing, that your name is accurate. This is what our back office looks like. And making sure that the reviews, let me see how far this goes. 
That's making sure. So this is talking about suppressing listings. This is if somebody has scammed your company or there's something similar, is suppressing it. We can't remove it, but we can try and push it back. If you've been in business or you bought a business that 20 years ago they had negative reviews and you don't want them out there, we can suppress that listing and start over. If you get negative reviews on a regular basis, we have an operational problem. It's either systems, processes, or people, and we need to get to the root cause and fix it. <laughs> okay? All right. Next. Social media. Your local listings team needs to work with your social media team. When somebody comes to your social media account, they're not doing it because they want to do business or because this is how they found you typically and to hire somebody. What they're doing is trying to feel comfortable that other people like you, you're alive and well, and you'll respond if they have an issue and they can contact you publicly if you don't. <laughs> okay? Worst thing you can do, have a social media site that has no likes or the last time you posted content was 12 years ago, 10 years ago, or in 2012, immediately someone feels like you are what? Closed. <coughs> Absolutely. So all, all I don't, ugh. web companies, they go build you guys a website, they put all the social media links at the top, like, woohoo, this is good for you. No, it's not good if they're empty. <laughs> it's not good. Take them off. They actually can hurt you by having all these social media links at the top if you have no content posted or 12 likes. That's bad. And those people, are you going to know that they didn't call you? You'll never know. Won't even know how much business they're listing. This program, you'll see all of these. Every holiday taken care of. All your promotions taken care of. Uh, motivational events. Promotions for uh, equipment, manufacturers, discounts, rebates, incentives. Um, new promotions that are seasonal promotions. This right here, what you're seeing, is 100 bucks a month, hands free. All we do is every quarter we ask you what are the promotions. We're already in with the mana so we know what they are. And you don't have to worry about this anymore. Better yet, you get a nerd to set your Facebook account up with Google Business or Google Place or excuse me, Google Plus, your Twitter account and so forth. And boom, all your social media sites are taken care of, hands free, done. Get this stuff out of your way. Make sense? What if you have multiple people in the same area? In other words, this table right here, we're all in the same area, every one of us sign up. Sign up with you. What do you do in that case? So you only have 10 spots per phrase and location. So one is really figuring out what your primary services are. Everybody's a little bit different. If you're smaller and you need to get those maintenance, or excuse me, if you're smaller and you need new service contracts or installation, then you're going to have different phrases. If you're bigger and you're like, God, I got a database of 10,000 customers we don't have on a maintenance plan, that's a different process. So it has to be based on very specific analysis of what the business needs are, what your locations are, what your phrases are. And at some point, if you get to 10 spots in, in one search for the exact same phrase, at that point, the consumer decides, which they're already doing. Right now, your consumers are already, they have 10 plus dis options when they go to any search online. So in this situation, you're going to have to change everything else. How quickly do you respond? How quickly do you answer phone calls? What does your customer service person sound like? So now you're in an entirely different portion of your business in order to figure out are you going to get the business over someone else? Both of you had the same shot. Make sense? Time. How long? Done. All right. <laughs> so you guys, um, this presentation of course, we're recording the whole thing. Scott is here, so Mike Hickland, VP of Operations, Kathy Marshall, VP of Customer Service, Scott Smith, he's head of our video production. You guys, this is recorded, so you'll get a copy of it. And I'll fly faster in different ones, so if you watch all the videos, you'll actually get the whole session. <laughs> However, this is all this is about, getting compressed time. We will do a complimentary evaluation and strategy session with each one of you. My schedule is packed. However, you can go to ciwebgroup.com. These guys all have business cards. You can grab a business card from them. Go there, bottom right hand side, call to action that says schedule a meeting now. It says schedule a free strategy session and put in your time and we'll get it on the books and we'll go from there. Sound all right? You guys can also leave your card with um, them and we'll email you the video afterwards. Cool? Is this helpful? Awesome, thank you. <laughs>